Do not ever underestimate the CELPIP test. Prepare with the free tools and the tips that are available, even if you consider yourself to be a very verse English speaker. <laughs> Hello guys, welcome back to Perceptive Mindset. I am so random. Today we are going to look quickly at the CELPIP test. And for those who are not familiar with it, I'm on the CELPIP website. What is CELPIP? The Canadian English Language Proficiency Index Program, CELPIP, is a general English language proficiency test. It allows test takers to demonstrate their ability to function in English. The test clearly accurately and precisely assesses a test taker's English abilities in a variety of everyday situations, such as communicating with co-workers and superiors in the workplace, interacting with friends, understanding newscasts, and interpreting and responding to written materials. Now, it's usually for immigration purposes. So if it is that you are thinking of migrating to Canada, then the CELPIP test can be used to assess your English language proficiency. Now, there are two different types of tests that you will see on the CELPIP website. There is the CELPIP general test for 280 Canadian dollars plus taxes, and it's not limited to Canada if you're in Canada, but where, wherever applicable. So outside of Canada as well, you can take this test. And then there is the CELPIP general LS test only in Canada, and it's $195 plus taxes. However, today we are going to focus on the general test because lots of persons who are migrating to Canada would be outside of Canada or they're in Canada, but not a PR resident or, or a citizen. So still, it's the general test that you would need to take to demonstrate your English language proficiency. Now, for this one, it's it can be from three to three hours to three hours and 30 minutes to complete the entire test because it's it has to be done in one sitting and there is no separation from you just keep moving through and let me show you right here so this is it for the general test it's done in about three hours three hours to three hours and 15 to 30 minutes all right so these are the four areas that you will be tested on and in this order. So you will do the listening first. So you listen to passages and you will answer questions. And that's the, yeah, that's the first one. Then you go to the reading where you read passages and you answer questions. Then you go to writing where you respond to questions with written answers. And then you have the speaking, which is the final part of the test where you reply to on-screen prompts verbally. But guys, as simple as you see this look, it can be challenging, especially if you get flustered in the exam. And what can account for you getting flustered is time just keep running out on you before you are able to formulate your thoughts and your ideas. So as versed as you think you are in English, you can get flustered in the exam simply because time keeps running out on you because you are taking a longer time to formulate your thoughts. And that is what this video is about today. Preparing so that you can be at your best when you're doing the exam, because anything that you do and practice, repetition makes perfect, right? So you're going to practice, 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 despite how verse you think you are. Let's look at the test level descriptor. So the highest that you can get in the CELPIP test is 12. And if you get a 12 or even 11, it meant that you have demonstrated that you are an advanced English speaker. You, you are based on the description here. It says advanced proficiency in workplace and community context. And you will see that it's the same score if you're 11 and 12. So naturally, if you achieve a 12, it means that you would have done a little bit more than what the 11 had done, but it's still considered advanced, but you got a little bit higher mark in the end over the person who would have gotten a, an 11. And for 10, it meant that highly effective proficiency. And for nine, which a lot of persons, anywhere from nine to 12 would be considered good. So effective proficiency in workplace and community context. I think for the Canada immigration, the benchmark is seven, 
where you have adequate proficiency in workplace and community context. So a lot of persons aspire from anywhere from 7 to 12. However, more advanced persons who want to score higher would want to score anywhere on average from 10 to 12. So it just depends on you and your ambition. So I'll link this link in the description so that you can always go through so guys in order to not make this video too long i will be focusing on each of the different sections of the test in only one video so i will be focusing today on the listening part of the test and then in the description i will place the link for cellpip all the resources that are related to cellpip will be placed on that link also there will be a playlist on the channel called cellpip so you can always go there just to make sure it's easier for you to find the information as well as not to be information overloaded so we are focusing on them one at a time starting off with the listening component of the test so the cellpip listening test contains six parts and they are as follows so there's listening to problem solving and you'll notice that number one and seven is the same thing you will see listening to a conversation listening to a news item listening to a discussion listening to information and listening to viewpoints those are the six components or the six parts which makes up the listening part of the test. This part involves three conversations and each conversation is of 90 seconds. The discussion is made around the issue of one of the participants. Usually, candidates are expected to listen carefully and then you need to answer the questions and it's usually eight questions that follows. To answer each question, you will only get 30 seconds. I'm telling you guys, 30 seconds feels like 10 seconds when you're in the exam. So you have to capitalize on listening and you also have to take copious notes. Make sure that you're listening with intention. You're listening with a purpose. Make notes. Make note of the speakers and write down things that are relevant and you have to listen keenly. All right, so let's start off with listening to a conversation. This section will contain a conversation that lasts two minutes. Now, after you listen to the conversation, you need to answer the questions and you are only given 30 seconds. All right, so you have to bear that in mind. So that's for listening to a conversation. This is where they're going to test your listening skills. Next, they are going to test listening to a news item. So in this section, the listener, that's you, you will listen to a news recording. The recording will be one and a half minutes. The listener needs to answer five MCQs. That's multiple choice questions based on the news item. So the news may contain facts. You may have some figures and therefore the best way to attempt this section is to take notes while listening. Now you have to learn to take notes fast and in short and, and make sure that you're able to read it whenever you are ready it makes no sense you take the notes at the end of the day it, it is not able or you're not able to reliably use the information because you yourself you have forgotten what you wrote now it can happen right but as best as possible try to make notes even in shorthand that you can recall that it can help you with your your exam all right so next one is listening to uh, discussion. So with this one, the candidate will be shown a video containing a conversation between three or more persons. You need to answer the questions that follows. That is it. No, I'm telling you, it can get very challenging this part of it. So whether or not you are versed on the English language, when three persons are talking having a discussion and you are trying to take notes in between the three persons having the discussion you can get a little bit flustered and you will miss a, a few things because you don't write in milliseconds you're not a robot and so you can only take down so many notes so you have to rely on your listening skills and being able to recall the conversation all right so it's important for you to remember that next up we have listening for information so the student will be provided with a recording of 2.5 minutes long 
and you need to answer questions based on the recording. That is it. Again, it's all about taking notes, copious notes, reliable notes, notes that you can use to help you to answer the questions when it is required for you to do so. Next up, we have listening to viewpoints. This part, you will listen to different viewpoints from various speakers. And if you notice, it sounds more technical as you progress in the test. So the first part that you did, it might sound like, oh, wow, this, this was not hard. But as you keep getting the different listening tasks, then you realize that it progressively gets harder. It's the same thing. Taking notes will be harder. And let me tell you, out of frustration and being flustered, you will even freeze in taking your notes because you're so confused as to what notes you should take down. There's so many information. There's interaction between the different speakers and you just get a little bit flustered, not sure what notes, and then you have to rely on context clues and re trying to recall what you have heard. And that is why I said, and I keep stressing that, you should not underestimate the exam. So again, this part of the test, you will listen to various viewpoints from various speakers. It might be three of them. The recording will be of three minutes. Can you imagine you're listening to three persons speaking for three minutes and then you will be given questions and you are there trying to take notes for the duration of the three minutes listening to three at least or, or possibly three speakers that can get very challenging. And so again, do not underestimate. You have to prepare for the exam. Let's look at some tips before you take the test. You must have a strategy to follow in order for you to pass the exam. And like I said prior, matters not how versed you are in the English language, you must have a strategy. Now, the appropriate strategy is to use the steps that are outlined on the free sample self test, right? You will see the format of the exam. You will see how you will progress from one screen to the other, all of that so it does not feel like foreign territory when you are attempting the exam. All right, so the first tip, number one, is the sample test. This is an excellent idea to get used to the CELPIP listening test. The main website of CELPIP gives you the first sample test free of cost, and this will help you to know what area of the listening you may need to improve on. Repetition make things easier, right? So the more you practice, it's the more you'll be able to find your strengths, your weaknesses, and know where you can improve on. The second tip is to practice well. This not only applies to this part of the test, which is the listening, but for the CELPIP test as a whole, including listening, the reading, the writing, and the speaking. So practicing it before the test will help you to get used to it so it does not feel like it is unfamiliar. Tip number three, you must read more. You can watch a movie or a television show with subtitles so that you can understand what the characters are saying. And in this way, you can get used to hearing spoken words. Remember, not everybody that will be undertaking the CELPIP test speaks English as their first language. So if it is that English is your first language and you're hearing about this, it might sound as if, hey, I got this. I don't need to do all of that. When you improve your, your vocabulary by doing different things and engaging in different conversation, like even watching a movie, reading the subtitles, then your vocabulary overall will be improved. In CELPIP, the listening test, you won't get the subtitles with the recording. So watching movies will help to grab English words quickly. Later on, you can watch it without subtitles when it's easy. So that's where watching movies can come in very handy for the cell people listening test. Tip number four, talk to more people. You can improve listening skills by talking to as many persons as possible. You can speak with your friends. You can speak with your family. 
and you can get used to hearing English, especially if it is not your first language. It does help. Tip number five, go social. Listening skills can be improved by exposing yourselves to social media, exposing yourself to social situations like shopping, asking for directions and opinions. These are activities with the more they are done, the listening will be improved. Right. And remember, this video is also for persons who are looking to improve on their English. If you have English as your first language, this will seem like it's a walk in the park. But I'm telling you, it can even challenge persons whose first language is English. Timing is important. You must be able to manage your time well. Time management is integral because you do get limited time in the cell people listening test while giving the sample test you will realize that you're able to go back to a question or to go back to listen to the audio that's not the case when it comes on to the test on test day you will not be able to go back once the timer runs out that's it the screen will move on you don't even have to select next on the screen it will just move on so you have to make sure that you are managing your time well now we're going to look at some tips during the test the tips that i have just given were tips before the test now i'm going to look at tips during the test Tip number one, attention is everything. As it's a listening test, you can't risk missing even a second of information. So you must attentively listen to the recording as the questions are based on the recording only. So if you did not hear the recording, then you will not be able to appropriately answer the questions because they are going to be based on the recording. So if you missed something, then it's going to be very challenging for you to answer the question because you did not hear. So you have to listen. Time management, again, is also important during the test. In the cell people listening tests, you must learn to manage your time because the you have a limited time to answer every single question. If you are stuck on one question, skip it and answer further. But you have to keep an eye on the timer and try to answer every question within the time limit. So you will be seeing different questions. If you are stuck on one, don't waste all the time trying to figure it out. If you are able to see the other questions, because different questions and different scenarios, they are set up differently, but there are some questions that you will be able to see one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So you can move on to the one that you are more familiar with in terms of the answer, and then you can get back to the other one. However, you have to bear in mind the time within which you got to answer the question. Number three, you have to make notes. This is a must. The recordings may contain a lot of information. You just cannot remember everything at the end. There are certain things that you will remember, but you will not be able to remember everything at the end of the conversation. So therefore, you must try to know the important information like facts, dates, times, locations, and figures to see them later on, how they can help you to answer the question. So you have to make notes and I dare add copious notes, notes that you can rely on, notes that you are able to use, make sure it's legible enough and make sure if it's short and you understand what you wrote. All right. Tip number four is to be calm. It's easier said than done, especially if you are somebody who usually gets a little panicky during exams. You can answer the questions well, when, when you are relaxed, take several deep breaths and be at ease as best as practicable. A lot of things are easier said than done. Double check. If you have time, if time permits, if once you have answered the question, you realize that you have some seconds remaining, you might need to just go over and double check your work. So sometimes you may need to correct something or you might need to cross check something do that once you have the time if time permits and number six tip during 
the test is to plan well. You have to think about your answers that you want to put on the paper. Despite you might be a little bit flustered or no nervous, once you can bring yourself back to relaxation. And remember, everything that we're talking about has to happen within seconds because you don't have a lot of time. There's no extra time that is given for you to answer the question. So you have to capitalize on every second that you have. Use the time to outline and collect all your information. Whatever preparation time that you you got, you have to use it wisely and make sure that tip number seven, you always select an answer. The cell pip listening test doesn't have a negative marking. It means that if you select the wrong answer, there is no mark that will be deducted. So you must attempt all the questions. Attempt all the questions because there is no negative mark marking on the test. Thank you so much for watching, guys. I hope that I've added some value to you today. Please like this video. Please drop a comment. Ask a question if you have it. Do give me a thumbs up. This will help a lot of persons. And in the next video, I will be doing the cell pip reading. In the description, there will be a link and it will have all the resources on cell pip. You can also go to the playlist on the channel and under cell pip, all the resources will be there just for ease of reference. See you in the next one. Thank you so much for watching.